Since I created the first version of my Raspberry Pi desktop case back in 2020, a number of manufacturers have made spin-offs of the design, with some less spun-off than others. Some even asked me to review the case design that they unashamedly copied. Then Sunfounder reached out a few weeks ago and asked me if I'd be interested in trying out their new Pi and Man case. Unlike some of the others, this case, although bearing some resemblance, has actually been designed from scratch. And they've put some effort into designing a case that meets a number of the common things people look for in a Pi case. So let's get it unboxed and take a look at what it includes and get it set up. The case is designed for use with the Raspberry Pi 4 and also has an optional M.2 SATA SSD. So I'm using a 2GB Raspberry Pi 4 and a spare 240GB SSD which I've used recently on another build. In the box, first up are the assembly instructions. I'll go through the instructions in a bit more detail when putting the case together, but at first glance they're quite well written and illustrated. Below the foam insert is the case and components. The side panels are 3mm clear acrylic, and they're sent with the protective film in place on one side so that they don't get scratched. We've also got thermal pads for the cooler, ribbon cables for the carrier board, an i to c OLED display to show the Pi's CPU, disk and RAM usage, as well as a temperature and IP address, a pack of standoffs and screws, an addressable RGB LED strip, an ice cube cooler, which seems to be custom made for this case as it doesn't have the screw holes to mount the fan directly onto it like their standalone cooler. They've included some tools with the cooler brackets, a power switch, acrylic front panel cover and fan, a GPIO adapter and USB jumper, the main carrier board, and then the actual case with the second panel keeping it together. The case is a folded sheet metal design with a nice metallic silver finish and all the ports and cutouts are clearly labelled. It's also got their Pine Man logo at the top front edge. So you can see you really get a lot with the case. This also makes putting the case together quite a process, mainly because there's so many parts. But the instructions are pretty good and the screws and adapters are all well identified. So let's get it assembled. I know they included a screwdriver, but with the number of screws we've got, I'm going to rather use an electric driver. The first step is to remove the side panel from the case components so that they're all separated. Now we start the assembly process with the carrier board. This is the best part of the design I think. This board has an M.2 slot for a SATA SSD, pins to control the addressable RGB LED strip, an IR receiver which is great if you're going to use the Pi as a media player, an external GPIO header and power button input, and it's also got an SD card slot that is brought out to the back of the case with a little adapter so that you've got an option to swap out the SD card without dismantling the case. The display plugs straight into the connector at the front of the board. The power button then gets mounted onto the front panel and we can then feed the display through the slot alongside it and stick it into place. The power button plugs into the prepared pins on the carrier board, two for the power LED ring light and two for the contacts. Next we can plug in the LED strip which also plugs into prepared pins. Then a ribbon cable connects the GPIO adapter to the carrier board. This is to connect the Pi's GPIO pins to the carrier board to control things like the display, LED strip, power button and fan. I don't really like the way they've done this. I think it would have been an easier arrangement to use something like pogo pins used on some of the UPS shields. These ribbon cables are quite fragile and tear easily, and although they do give you a spare, it makes it more of a challenge to install this ribbon cable alongside the second for the SD card adapter. Next we need to connect this adapter. This plugs into the Pi's microSD card slot and allows you to plug in a microSD card on the same side as the USB ports. Now we can add our Raspberry Pi. This is just held in place with some additional nylon standoffs. And we can then plug all of the adapters in. Next up is the Ice Cube Cooler, which I've said in a previous video I prefer to the Ice Tower Cooler, as it covers and provides cooling to the chips surrounding the CPU as well. We've got two arms to install on the bottom, then the thermal pads, and then we can just screw it into place on top of the pie. The fins on the heatsink are quite fragile, and were already slightly damaged when it arrived, so take care not to put too much pressure on them. Now we can start reassembling the case on one of the side panels. 
The panels all go together with M2.5 by 6mm screws, which is quite easy but there are a lot of them. I'm not going to tighten them just yet, so that there's a little allowance for movement to make sure all the sides line up properly first. Before installing the top panel we can stick the LED strip to it. And before installing the second side panel we need to mount the fan onto it. They include mounting holes for the fan on either side of the case, so you can go with either option. One issue I did find with this though is that the fan hub protrudes from the housing enough that it catches on the acrylic, so you can only install the fan one way around, pushing air out of the case. This probably doesn't make any difference to the thermals, but I like having the hub side of the fan visible as the opposite side has an ugly sticker on it. I tried pressing the hub onto the motor a bit further, but that didn't make any difference. The fan also plugs directly into the carrier board. Now let's install the bottom panel. I'm going to have to open it up again to install the SSD, but that's really easy to do once the case is assembled. Now we can tighten all of the screws, add the pads to the bottom of the case, and then add the acrylic panel onto the front of the case. And that's the case assembled. Before I peel off the film on the sides, I'm going to install the SSD so that I don't get fingerprints onto them. Just to be clear, this is an M.2 SATA drive, not an NVMe drive. A lot of people have told me in a previous video that it was a waste using an NVMe drive that is connected through a USB 3 port. M.2 SATA drives actually have a pretty similar speed to the USB 3 ports on the Pi, at around 600 megabytes per second. The last thing to do is install the SSD jumper. There are some parts left over after assembly, which I assume are spares. The two black strips look like ones typically used for cable management, but they aren't mentioned anywhere in the instructions, so I'm not sure what the intention behind them is. Now let's get it booted up and see what it looks like. I used this drive previously, so it's still got my stats script on it, which looks like it works with this display as well. Online they've got instructions for how to set up the software to control their custom components. First you need to make changes to the configuration file for the power button and IR receiver. Next you'll need to install a script from their GitHub repository. This will control the OLED display, turn the fan on and off at a certain temperature, control the RGB LED strip, and activate a safe shutdown of your power when you press and hold the power button. Once you've loaded it, the LEDs in the case light up. And this looks quite cool. The display also shows their custom stats screen. I tried a quick stress test to check if the fan would come on, and it did. I then also tried playing around with some of the RGB light settings. You can change the light sequence, the color, and how quickly they change your pulse. The display goes to sleep after a period of time that you can set, and you short press the power button to wake it up again. If you long press the power button it'll shut down your power. The lights and fans stay on for a while after the power shuts down, but they do eventually turn off. And finally, pressing the power button wakes the power back up again. Overall, I quite like the detail that they've put into this case design. It's a good quality case, and it's really got all of the optional extras that you'd want if you're using your Pi as a mini computer. After putting the case together and using it for a few days, there are a couple of things I'd like to see improved. I like that the fan is mounted onto the side panel rather than on the cooler, so it is actually drawing fresh air into the case. I would have made the exhaust vents a little bigger than the input though, as you don't want to restrict the airflow out of the case. They've obviously done this so that you can put the fan on either side if you'd like to. The other more significant thing is the general assembly process. I think they've made the design slightly more complicated than it needs to be, 
The metal housing could have just been two parts instead of four. It's great that the bottom is removable to get to the SSD, but the other three sides should all be a single piece. This would make the installation much easier and would reduce the number of screws required. Definitely check out their web store if you'd like to get your own Pine Man case. It's one of the better ones I've seen and has good value with the SSD carrier board included. Let me know what you think of it in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more tech and electronics projects, tutorials, and reviews.